welcome back to your spilt videos so tonight we're gonna get started on episode one of building port matching head package whatever we want to call it for Lavaca as you've seen in the dyno the clutch slipped the car had a stage three in it I thought I remembered that I ordered a stage five but I actually ordered a stage three because it was for the budget build challenge it was the cheapest one on sale when I ordered it well now there's a stage five on the way um, the head was bone stock. It was a P8R head, stock spring, stock retainers, Delta 272 cams. I inboxed uh, the manufacturer personally, asked them for the cam specs to see what I could do to improve on that. I do have a set of cams being made, not by Delta. They're actually being made by Crower. Um, I'm not going to release the specs yet until I make sure I can get them because they're a custom spec cam that uh, they actually discontinued a long time ago. So I'm not gonna go too far into that. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna get into port matching the header, port matching the intake manifold, and take the head apart because I also ordered valve springs because on the dyno, as you saw in the dyno graph, which I could put it in here, as soon as we got to 7,400 RPMs, literally you've seen the car climbing, 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 you hit 7,400, valve float car dies basically what valve float is is the spring can't keep up with the camshaft well delta regrinds are just that regrinds so all they do is just cut back part of the cam off which gives you more duration or more lift or whatever they can use using a stock style cam well with the stock cam core you can only think only go up to like 335 lift and you can go i think it was like 230 something duration which is decent that's a that's a good upgrade for a simple bolt-on you know stock style valve spring which i should have ran valve springs with 272s uh delta themselves uh recommends anything after a 262 run a valve spring because you start getting to where it has long duration and you will hit valve float which is exactly what happened um the unforeseen clutch slipping we got that resolved ordered a stage five pulled the trans out slapped that in i don't really need to do that on a video you guys have seen that all before but tonight's first episode where I'm going to show you the differences, show you what we're going to fix on the intake, show you what we're going to fix on the header, and get the whole head torn apart, and um, get to cleaning everything up, and basically explaining each part of a non-VTEC head, and showing you how it all works, and showing you how easy it is to get it apart. So stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy the content. These videos are going to be a whole series on just building the head. Um, I'm going to leave the short block the exact same way I built it. So the same OEM rods, the same YCP, $130 pistons. Literally, this is gonna be my budget short block with a, I would call it stage one port job. I'm just gonna clean up the ports a little bit, nothing too crazy. Um, the valves already lapped on the head. I'd lap those when I first bought the head just to make sure everything was good and we had good compression. So I don't need to do that again, but just basic cleanup, port match, simple stuff that you can do with a few tools, and spending maybe a hundred bucks on materials and see how much power we can gain but we will have a real set of cams and a real set of springs this time so we should be able to rev the car to whereas before we were limited to 7200 where or 7400 where the valves float um, this time the power band should be close to nine grand uh, the factory oil pump is going to start having issues there the factory rods are going to start not liking it there but i will take the da to the track on motor so you know at least we'll be able to race the car have fun with it and then if we need to spray it spray it you know make it go fast but i want to get the car so i can have seat time with it so i can get the things ironed out like shifting and clutch and you know there's so many things you have to iron out on the car um so let's get right to the action so if you guys haven't watched the channel before this is our B20 or LS Edelbrock Victor X. A lot of people are, are, you know, questioning the manifold choice. I prefer these manifolds from everything I've learned, helping other people with their B series uh, cars. These manifolds work amazing. Um, of course, the DA does have a direct port 150 shot. The Edelbrock manifold from the factory, we have a stock gasket. This is the gasket that was actually on the DA. If you line these up, the ports are really, really close. But if you look inside the manifold here, I don't know how well you'll see it on the camera. There's this nice ridge right here. 
which is basically how they made it match the ports. So what we're going to do is just clean up this ridge. And then if we go over here to the header, if you guys remember, I, I hand built this header. It is not the best, but if you look on the header, you can see, let's get the gasket. The, the head lines up perfect. There's barely any difference between the head and the gasket. But if we take this gasket, if we can get it off, and we go over here and stick it on this header. Let me get out here in the light so you can see. There's a huge area around the header that the air coming out of the cylinder is literally running into. It's going to be hard to see on the camera just because everything's all black. But if we literally take the gasket off, you can see basically the gray outline. And that is horsepower we're just throwing away. So what we're going to do first step is port match this, clean up the intake manifold, and get the head taken apart. So I'm going to put you guys on the time lapse. Pretty much start working on the head first, take the head apart, and then we'll get to port matching stuff. I'm going to do it the ghetto, old school way. You basically get a 13 16 spark plug socket and a long extension and you just set it on top of the retainer and just tap it with a hammer. Sometimes you have to use a little force, but literally the keeper pops out. Then you just do it one more time. The other keeper pops out and you're going to remove your spring. So these factory springs are very weak. You can see I can I can flex them with my fingers. Um, these aftermarket ones will definitely not be that weak because the yams that we're getting are, are rather large. So now you just repeat that process on all 16 valves and get it all apart. As you can see all the valves are out and uh, basically you can see this nice little edge right here that little edge right there is the the valve seat so right here where it's back cut into this you basically just want to smooth the transition out from here to there uh, on this head the intake valves as you can see are tremendously larger than the exhaust valves the exhaust ports are horrible there is you can't really tell because it's so dirty but there is a large step down gap right there your, your exhaust flow, you need it as smooth as possible, of course, because you want to get as much air out as possible. Uh, the intake side of this head, you're not going to really have to touch much. I'm probably just going to use the sanding disc, which we got right here, 80 grit, 100 grit, 120 grit. So I'm probably just going to, you know, like 80 grit it real quick, then 100, then 120 it, and then I might get some polishing wheels later just to clean it up. But this exhaust side, I might actually have to use some some porting bits on it. It looks it looks pretty nasty. So, um, yeah, let's let's get the porting. That's your factory PHR intake valve versus exhaust valve, and you see that one moves kind of easy. This one, really easy. So, kind of a story on its own why valve floats real easy. Those valves are very weak. We have all of our valves lined up over here, nice and orderly. Um, every one of the valves that came out, if you see right there, nice shiny mark all the way around. That's how you know it was getting a good seal. Intake valves are the same way. I did clean these valves up before we put the head back together. And you see that nice shiny spot all the way around. Uh, that shows you they were making a good seal. So what we have here, a die grinder with the quarter inch bit and we got a drill which is what I'm going to use the sanding disc on uh, I already did the first little bit with this I didn't record it but this thing is crazy it spins at like 25,000 RPMs and it's pretty dangerous and I've bent two of the bits already so uh, yeah don't recommend that that's dangerous and uh, not very safe 
so I'll literally do the rest with this so the whole um, part I was doing with the die grinder was I was just getting this a little bit sharpened so with the sanding disc I can clean it out uh, these two ports right here already started with the sanding disc this is literally just the first pass I did not do the bowl yet um, I'm literally just cleaning this up I am NOT actually making this any bigger I'm literally just sanding it down with the 80 120 or 100 and 120 um, these heads already have big enough ports there's no reason to really port it out you know because all you're gonna do is kill the velocity of the air uh, now the bowl work which is down here that's you know you can see my finger down in the hole um, that's where you actually want to make it nice and smooth you can enlarge in it a little bit but you just want to make sure the air is basically happy getting out of the cylinder um, and then like I said on the intake side I'm just gonna use the sanding bits for everything uh, I probably won't go too crazy on this head uh, once I got this port cleaned out these ports are actually pretty good and um, like I said like I showed you earlier the the header and the intake manifold are pretty much already close to the to the head port but the header itself is the farthest off so I'll probably do the most work on the header so this is the first port I hit with the die grinder you can see very noticeable difference this whole black ring right here is completely gone and if we get the exhaust gasket no, I'm still going to have to take the sanding wheels to this as well. But if I get the exhaust gasket and lay it over top of it, it's nice and smooth now. So this all fits, whereas this literally has that metal edge right there. Alright guys, so I'm no professional porter. But one thing I see um, a lot of people that make porting videos on YouTube is they always do one cylinder at a time. And then they try to replicate it on the next cylinder, and the next cylinder, the next cylinder. Um, that's not really a good style in my opinion. Um, what you should do is, you know, do a little bit here, do the same exact movement here, do the same exact movement here, and do the same exact movement here. So if you do all four at the same time, it'll be a lot more equal because if as long as you do the same thing on each port, technically it should be exactly the same. Uh, Hand porting is a uh, unique skill. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do this head. I've never done a B series head. I've done an H head and I've done an F head before. Uh, so we'll see what kind of power we can make with it. But we're also going to change the cams and springs and retainers. So, you know, they, it could be a lot of gains. It could be a little gains. We won't really know exactly how much. But, you know, at least I'll be content with the ports. This is still the 80 grit. Just cleaning up the ports, shaping, making sure that's round, matches that round, matches that, matches that. You see this one looks a little bigger on this side, but if you put the camera this way, it's actually just the angle of the port. This one looks exactly the same. This one looks exactly the same. So. Alright guys, so it's been about another 30 minutes now. I'm just going to do intervals. I don't want to waste, you know, your guys' time. But this is what the ports are looking like so far. Uh, basically just been blending this valve seat right into the bowl. It's nice and, nice and smooth. This is with the, the 80 grit still. There's still a little, um, like a pocket. You could fill it with your finger. Kind of like if you do body work, you can fill a little dent. Uh, there's a pocket under all of these still uh, this one has a real bad ridge right here so got to continue on that the intake has plenty of flow with the VTEC size valves uh, like I said literally all you're gonna have to do on the intake side is just clean up the bowls a little bit and that should be it you don't even have to touch the ports up here um, a really big misconception about porting which a lot of people do wrong is they think you need to hollow this out hollowing out that actually slows down the velocity of the air coming into the port uh, and that's actually bad for flow so just hollowing them out and making them 
you know, as some people say. These are also headstands, if you guys are wondering what I'm flipping the head around on. They have uh, brass up here, and they're a plastic coating, so I can just literally flip the head all around, and it doesn't hurt anything. Um, but there's a better view. Yes, the, the ports are offset. That's another thing I've been noticing. On this side of the head, these two ports are offset this way, whereas these are directly out. Um, and then on this side of the head, these two ports are offset. Uh, what that does is create a venturi effect, so it actually helps this cylinder, or this valve helps pull the air out of this valve as well. Um, if you guys don't understand what I'm talking about, just Google like a swirl port head. That's basically from the design of this port is what this exhaust side looks like. And that allows you to run a small size valve and it still becomes very efficient. Even though these, these ports are decently sized. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I literally did not port the, the, the thing besides the, the, the peak right here. Narrow it up just to add some volume in the cylinder or in the combustion chamber. I mean, in the port. Wow, I'm, I'm lost. But uh... Alright guys, so what I did is just took the gasket and put a little red spray paint. And you can see, even after I ported a ton, like look, I ported these holes a ton so far, you can see it still isn't all the way. So, I'm going to get to doing some more porting on the header. The header was, to me, the worst part, because at least the intake manifold somewhat matched. Um, but, you can see the whole port is least sanded now um, I don't know if you guys can see on the camera but you see that black line right there that is actually the head casting and it goes all the way around and then comes up this side and that's in every port so a lot of people that I've seen uh, try to port that all the way out I don't really feel it's necessary um, you you're literally just trying to smooth the air or smooth the transition for the air coming past the valve to the port so you know making this wider and bigger or it just creates you know more volume but that actually will slow the air down so you know like I said earlier a lot of people think you just make the holes bigger you make the holes bigger you make the holes bigger I say you think about it as if you're air on the back side of the valve so if you're here what's the path of least resistance get it to get out of this hole and that's how I port thinking I think as if you know I'm the air flowing through the cylinder um, it's just like the intake side this head the intake is so phenomenal I'm probably gonna say this 30 times in this video you do not need to touch the intake on a P8R head if you do anything to these heads do the exhaust ports all right guys back again with another update so since the last clip i let the head set over here uh i got to work a little bit on the intake manifold just cleaning everything up that transition point on the manifold is completely gone it's nice and flat now uh, i got to work on the header it's gasket matched so intake manifolds gasket matched headers gasket matched now all we technically got to do is uh get to sanding on the intake manifold i mean get to sanding on the intake ports um i'm going to get more sanding disc i ran out of 80 disc so right now the only thing i have is the 100 and the 120s so i can get the i get started on the intake it's literally the exact same process as the exhaust there's nothing you know like i said the, the intake manifold and the intake side of this setup is amazing it's actually probably way too much air. That's another reason why the graph was so linear. Um, the head was probably the biggest restriction on the exhaust side. And, the, and the, the, even though we made a hood exit, the hood exit was at least covering, I would say, you know, three-eighths of the port. So that, that's a pretty large amount of port being covered by a header flange. But that'll be it for this first episode uh said so that'll be it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it porting is not very entertaining it's not fun work so uh back in the day i used to do this a lot i've probably ported 15 plus heads for f22s and f23s so just a little backstory on why i'm so confident in porting um porting is a very learned art per se um 
everybody has a different opinion on what is right. Some people say you, you know, add to the floor, shallow up the chamber so that you have better port velocity. Some people say you just hog it out. Some people say you dimple dye the intake side. Some people say you, you polish the exhaust so that it's, you know, mirror finished. There's literally every, uh, you, I'm sure you could YouTube it or Google it and you will see 5 million different answers on proper porting. Uh, my biggest thing that I, I always tell people, a lot of the information from, you know, the, 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 the old school porting guys are all for carbureted cars. Well, we have fuel injection. So our fuel injector sets right here. So literally anything past this point, fuel gets to. Anything before this point, nothing but air gets to. So it changes the way you port a car. Um, also your cam size and your compression changes the way you port a car. Uh, very small ports, you don't need much compression. You don't need much cam because the velocity is so high. A very large port, you better have a lot of compression and you better have a lot of cam or the car is going to feel really slow. So that's just a little simple explanation. Yeah, port, work, port matching, porting, port matching. Uh, until the next video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed.